Hello, good morning. Well, several people have asked me what my cycling plans are for 2019, so I thought I'd just describe a little bit about the goals I've set myself and the preparation involved as well. So that's what this video is going to be about. I do like goal setting. I find it works me. It gives me a purpose and a plan and a strategy. There's a great saying that I often refer to, a dream is just a dream, a goal is a dream with a plan and a deadline. That sums it up perfectly for me. I actually enjoy the planning aspect of it as well, the logistics and the supply and the trying to figure out any problems in advance and also being prepared on the road for glitches and being able to adapt to change the circumstances. So yeah, I found goal setting just meets so many of my needs. So the big goal for 2019 is an end-to-end. -end. I've ridden Land's End to John O'Groats, I think I did it in 1998, and it was a fantastic cycling holiday. I did a CTC route based on youth hostels, and I think it took 10 days. Sometime in the last 25 years, I heard about the alternative end-to-end, -end, Dover to Cape Wrath. And I remember thinking, maybe I'll do that one day. So soon after my 1200km DIY last June, a few days after I'd recovered, I started giving it a little bit of thought what I wanted to do this year. And I was watching a video by a friend of mine, Idi Makaya, riding a Land's End to John O'Groats and back. In fact, he set a record on an elliptical bike with his mate. And I found that really inspiring. It was while I was watching that video that the Dover to Cape Bath idea just flashed through my head. I did a quick Google Maps check and I realised the distance was slightly under 1300 kilometres and I just thought could I make it into a 1400 kilometre ride and I was sure I could and then I started thinking I've really come to enjoy the overnight stops at youth hostels and travel lodges, did I really want to ride the 1400 kilometres as one event? And I gave it a little bit of thought over a few nights and I decided I actually wanted to do it more as a holiday. So the plan is to ride Dover to Cape Bath as seven 200 kilometre DIY Audaxes stopping in travel lodges, premier inns and youth hostels each night. So that route would take me from Dover to Durness on the north coast of Scotland. And then on the eighth day, I'm going to do a 28 mile ride from Durness Youth Hostel, get the ferry across the Carl of Durness, ride across the army ranges up to Cape Bath and then ride back to the Youth Hostel that night. In effect it's a bit of a rest day and it's also a get out of jail free card as well because quite often that ferry doesn't run due to tidal or weather conditions. So I can still do the end to end Dover to Durness but I'd like to get to Cape Bath. On the ninth day I'll then do an eighth 200 km DIY from Durness back to Inverness Youth Hostel and the following day I'm going to fly back from Inverness to Lowsgate Airport then ride my bike back to Bath. So that's the goal for 2019. Here's a map of the route. And here's the route that I just described on day 8, the Durness to Cape Bath and back. Gives you an idea of the geography. So my, my initial thought was there wouldn't be travel lodges or youth hostels so convenient for my plans. I'd have to investigate other forms of accommodation like Airbnb. As I started doing the initial planning, it, it just sort of blew me away that every single 200 kilometre would end in a town or an area where there would either be a travel lodge, a premier inn or a youth hostel. And lo and behold, I, I booked them all bar one. One of them's not yet open for booking. Then there was the logistics of how to get from Bath to Dover invariably means going through London and then how to get back from somewhere in Scotland. I figured it probably would be in Vaness but I kept an open mind. I would started looking at train prices and they were prohibitively expensive and I knew they would be rising in the new year because they were only listed up until I think January 2019 and lo and behold they've since gone up by 3%. So I started thinking of alternatives and I've come up with getting a, a National Express coach from Bath to Dover for £13, that's one three. The train fare listed last year was £76, so you get 
you get the idea of how, how significantly cheaper it is. And then the train back from Inverness to Bristol Parkway, I think was £244. I've got an EasyJet flight for £27. So again, another significant saving. The only thing is you have to pay a £40 bicycle fee, but even that just takes the fare up to £67. And also the other, the other thing I like about using a coach and an aeroplane, you're guaranteed a seat, there's no scramble for places. And yes, I've had to pay for my bicycle, that's a price worth paying. And I calculated using the 3% increase that was expected and, and has since happened that the actual saving I would make on the train fare almost paid all my accommodation costs. Not quite, but almost. So I started doing some online research and I tried to find out was it possible to take my bicycle on a coach and there were one or two vague references to it but nothing really concrete so I thought just run an experiment and see what happens. So before Christmas I just booked a, a National Express coach from Bath up to Chippenham, 14 miles up the A4 up the road and then just rode my bike back and I realised I'm going to need a bike bag to take my bike on the coach. I bought a bike bag off eBay for £27 and I stripped my bike down, ran this experiment, got on the coach no problem, folded the bike bag up when I got to Chippenham, went into a local WH Smith, boxed it and sent it back to my house DHR, rode the next day. So that's what I plan to do on the end to end. When I get to Dover, I'll reassemble my bike, fold the bike bag up, go to a DHL and actually send the bike bag up to an Inverness Youth Hostel so it's waiting for me on my return. Because one of the stipulations of taking your bike on the EasyJet flight is it has to be in a bike bag. So I'm going to run another experiment in a few weeks time. So a little bit about that. So there's there's an All Dats calendar event called the London Orbital and in effect it does a complete circuit of the, the outskirts of London. It replicates the M25 Orbital motorway and it actually goes right past Jordan's Youth Hostel. So what I plan to do is I've borrowed the route. Some would say I've nicked the route. I, what I would say is I haven't nicked it. I'm inspired by it. And so what I'm going to do is ride that as a DIY and base myself at Jordan's Youth Hostel for two nights. The day before the ride, I'm going to get a coach from Bath to Slough, fold my bike up, carry it in a backpack up to the Youth Hostel, stay there two nights, ride the 200 and then reverse the journey on the way back. And it'll give me two more chances to try out the coach with the bike bag, just iron out any problems. Here's a map of the route. It gives you an idea of what I plan to do probably sometime in March or April and it'll be on a weekday as well. I, I haven't ridden too many Aldax calendar events in the last few years. The last couple I rode put me off them a little bit. It's just a personal opinion but it felt a bit too much like racing. Um, so I've just decided to go off and do my own thing with DIYs. I have wanted to start riding calendar events again, but some more low-key, less competitive ones. So I've entered a, a few 100 and 150 kilometre calendar events, and I'm actually going to ride turn from the start, so I'm going to ECE them, which stands for Extended Calendar Event. It encourages riders to ride to, to and from events and not drive there. So I will convert a 150 kilometer calendar event into 200 kilometer validated Aldax ride. So the extended calendar event is very much like a DIY Aldax. Um, the entry form is slightly different. I've had a go at one so far so I'll see whether I've got it right or not in the next couple of weeks. So since the end of October I've been doing a lot of 200 kilometer events to youth hostels staying overnight and riding back the next day. I'll be finishing that towards the end of February then during March I intend to start increasing the distances a little bit up to 300s and then it'd be some 400s which I actually came to really enjoy the distance last year. I used to dread them and when I was riding my super randonneur around the year back in 2015 I always knew 400 especially during the winter were going to cause me a lot of problems 
so during 2015 I was trying to figure out how I would actually cope with 400s all through the winter I feared them more than the 600s to be honest because of the the sleep deprivation side of it and when I was researching I came across an interview with Steve Abrahams who, the well-known all that cyclist and he was attempting his year-long distance record at the time and this interviewer asked him how do you cope with sleep deprivation and Steve Abraham just replied I don't I sleep and it was just like an arrow through me head lightning bolt so it just seems such an obvious solution if you can't fight sleep why try to it's a, it's a battle you're not going to win so during that winter I find that I could ride 300 kilometers come back here have a shower some hot food a couple of hours sleep and then sat out at one o'clock in the morning maybe and ride the final hundred kilometers and get back for breakfast and the, the transformation was just just you can't put it into words instead of coming home more dead than alive I was coming home fully refreshed actually and so I just translated that into the summer events where I would just find uh, bivy spots and take a bivy bag or, or bivy and bus shelters or church porches now I've actually come to really enjoy the 400 distance so in my build up to the end to end 400s will pay quite a significant role and I've also designed a couple of 600 kilometer DIY Audax events so I'm really looking forward to trying at least one of those and then that would take me through May hopefully then as I approach June, I'll start tapering off and just going back to 300s. My idea is if I get used to the longer distances, incrementally building up and then taper off, the 200s should, in theory, feel a lot easier. It will be 200s every day rather than one long 1400 kilometres. So I don't think sleep deprivation is going to be such an issue. I think what the problem might possibly be is motivating myself to start each day as I get more and more tired. That may be an issue, it may not, but I'm certainly prepared for it. And then of course 2019 is Paris Breast Paris year. I've decided last year I didn't want to ride it again this year. I've ridden it three times already and I would say to anybody who hasn't ridden it, give it a go. It, it's just a fantastic experience. It's just I've chosen not to ride it this year. Whether I ever ride it again or not, I'm not sure. But I am very aware that there would be a lot of talk and a lot of buzz going on at the time. And I did wonder how I'll sort of cope with that. Will I start to regret my decision? So I've got something else lined up. So during the period of Paris Press Paris, I've set myself another little goal. Nothing concrete. And to be honest, if the weather's really bad, I'll probably just delay it till September maybe. So more about that as the year unfolds. Like all plans, I'm sure they're, they'll adapt and change as, a, as circumstances change. But that's a little bit about my plans and my goals for this year.